Hey everybody, so I'm uh, quickly flying through my uh, pile of shame during quarantine and uh, I'm trying to get all of my um, nautical stuff done, like everything to do with pirates, ships, just all everything in, that I wanted to get painted that has to do with that kind of stuff for this campaign that I'm doing. So. I can use it when I can see my friends getting to play D&D. Um, but, uh, so, yeah, I'm painting up a, a deep collar and then a couple of mind flares that I had. Um, and then I'm using the same palette to, to paint them all up. And, um, yeah, I, it's, I've been doing a lot of videos lately where I've been painting up like skirmish games or like armies, you know, like squads and um, speed painting them. But this one, this is going to be one of those ones where I'm like focused on one mini. Uh, I think you could probably tell like which one got the most attention from looking at it. But I just like, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with this deep collar. Kept changing my mind. So you guys seem to like those videos, but uh, hopefully this scratches that itch. And about Wrath of Kings, I've been looking for this stuff. Um, apparently, you know, it just all got fire sailed. I, I guess it's just it wasn't really successful as a Simon game, or it didn't. They so a lot of the stuff is out of print, and it's just got sold on the super cheap. And I've been looking for some Hadros Nephrodons. If anybody has has seen these guys, or if you want to sell them. Uh, or if you want to be like super cool and like send them to me, you know, and 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 then we can do a video. Um, but uh, I, I will I will I'll pay I'll pay money for them. I really I, I want them. I want these minis because they look cool. But um, but anyways, yeah, we'll um, we'll get on with the uh, with the painting. Okay, so I've got these. Um, well. I've got the card art for this guy, for um, this deep collar guy, but um, I don't like it that much. <laughs> um, I think, and I've seen the uh, like pro paint job, the studio paint job, and um, I, I don't know, I'm not that big of a fan of that one either. So I think I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to do these guys so I have I have some other I have some mind players too uh, these are just some Liz, Liz kids um, NECA minis and um, what I want to do though is uh, I'm gonna get, paint these guys all up like mind players but have them have different kind of skin tones and but I think I'm gonna use a very similar palette to paint all of them. So I have some concept art that I'm looking at, some Mind Flare uh, Illithid concept art. So I think I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna work from that instead. So let's see, I got some purples and I'm gonna mix uh, this stuff, this um, Fantasy Pro stuff from Vallejo with uh, Game Inks. Um, there's some, some purples that I want to do, so the game ink is not going to be opaque, it's going to be kind of transparent, and then that's going to dull down the um, how, how opaque this stuff is, because this stuff is like a heavy body acrylic, but it's really smooth and nice to work with. So, okay, we'll mix it. Start mixing on the wet palette. So what I'm doing is, is I'm uh, I'm using the game inks to kind of go into the recesses and stuff and create some shadows. Um, but so these guys already have they're already Zenith all primed, and um, I'm not going to get into that. I, I've I've done a video where I go really in depth. 
talking about how I do Xenothal Prime, but um, I'll, I'll put a link somewhere for that. But what, what this is is that I'm using the, the game inks to, to get those shadows in, and then it runs into the cracks and it kind of, it's, it's transparent. And then it's gonna um, seep into the cracks and create better shadows. And then I'm using the heavy body acrylics to wet blend into that. So the, the inks are, are wet. And then I'm just gonna s sort of sketch on some highlights over my uh, Zenithal Prime. So the, the Zenithal Prime just shows me where my lights and darks belong. And then I'm gonna just kind of sketch like that for a while with the wet palette until I'm happy that I have some good um, like highlights and shadows developed on the model just to get some general tone on him because uh, that's gonna be a jumping off point for later when I get into more detail. But for now, I'm just gonna do some sketching with, uh, with the wet palette and develop those uh, lights and darks. But at this point, it's still pretty abstract. Like you can get a long ways with the wet palette, just doing wet on wet painting. Uh, but you know, like when you get into the finer details, you, you wanna let them dry and then so that you can work on it a little bit more. And I'm gonna use that same palette to uh, do some purple on uh, my Illithid, one of my Mind Flayers uh, robes but I'm just gonna make it a little bit deeper, darker purple. And I decided that I wanted one of my mind flares to have a kind of sickly green skin. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna go in with some uh, dark green game inks and then I'm gonna wet blend in some more highlights on him while he's still wet with the wet palette. Wet mind flare. And I decided to use the same green to do the uh, deep collars little skirt thing. And it, it added something to it, but I was not happy with like the pastel kind of like Easter look of him. So I ended up ditching that later and doing something totally different. I'm also gonna go over anything that's metal and give it a, uh, a base coat of some some game inks mixed with a little bit of model air just to make it not totally black, but um, like a, a dark, dark gray. Um, but yeah, I, I really like how the game inks and like model air work together. I, I use that all the time on like every single mini I paint if, I do, if I'm doing a Xenothal Prime. But about the uh, the combination of the, the model air and the game inks, um, so the game inks are, you know, they're, they're pretty transparent. They can dry a little bit glossy, but the model air is also transparent. Like you can mix those together and the combination of this model air brown, this dark brown, and then the sepia game inks is actually my favorite leather that I've found. So, and this is where I'm just gonna glaze over the, um, uh, his, his skirt to kind of try and make it into like a leather. And um, you can see like the kind of opacity and um, the, the how, how much coverage you get from the game, sorry, not the game, it's the, the model air just straight out of the pot. Um, cause, uh, cause as I glaze over this stuff, it's not totally opaque. It's gonna still leave some of that green uh, undertone in there, and I like it. I like the green, but I want it to be a greenish leather.
And while I have the wet palette out, I'm gonna do some uh, kind of object surface lighting stuff on this guy's staff too. So I'm just gonna let those uh, blue colors kind of pool in the little recesses in his magical part of his staff. And, uh, and then I'm gonna work from dark to light and make those more bright and intense later. But at this point, it's more about just kind of putting some tone down like everywhere on the models and getting some good coverage. Um, although, you know, with leather and stuff like that, a lot of times by the time I'm done with the wet palette, I'm done. Um, maybe do like a little bit of dry brushing, a little bit of edge highlighting later. But um, uh, right now it's still pretty abstract. We're not, we're not getting into details, not doing a lot of uh, fine work. We're just kind of putting some color down and that's gonna be a jumping off point later. And I do want to let everything dry. It's really important to let things dry because if things are wet, you can just peel up paint. You can start painting and then all of a sudden, you know, you'll be doing this detail work and, uh, and then you'll just pull up a big old chunk of paint off your model. But after things have dried for a while, then I like to come back in and do detail work and do dry brushing and etc. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll take the dog for a walk. <laughs> Some people use a hair dryer. That scares me a little bit. Like I'm scared that I will think it's dry and it will not be dry <laughs> from the hair dryer. Like it looks dry, it's dry to the touch and then I'll just peel up some paint. So usually, yeah, usually I'll just take a break from it. I'll go get a drink. I'll go, you know, like uh, take the dog for a walk or whatever, like just walk away from it for a little bit, let my eyes kind of rest. And then I'll come back and do like dry brushing and detail work and stuff like that where you can just peel up paint. But whatever you do, don't prime your models and then start painting on them right away. Trust me, I've, I've, from experience, I know this. You want to let your primer get like bone dry before you actually start painting on top of it. Cause then you'll just take it off all the way down to the metal or the plastic. And that is not fun. And I'm pretty sure that in order to dry brush, your paint needs to be dry to dry, to dry brush on top of it or else you're just still wet morning. And here we go with the deep color. Um, just like how I couldn't make up my mind what to do with his, uh, his armor, um, well, his, his non-metallic armor, now I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with his uh, metallic armor and uh, his staff. So I wanted to do some kind of like brass, kind of like verdigris stuff, uh, like patina him a little bit. And I was thinking of doing a brass over the top of the black and the, the um, kind of silvery uh, metal, but I went back and forth and back and forth with it for a while. So first off, before I went back to the uh, armor and stuff, I did go over everybody with uh, a little bit of a flesh wash just to kind of tie together all of my um, wet palette stuff. And uh, and then I think I just called the, the uh, illithids good. I think I was just like, yeah, that's good enough for nerd poker. And then I just focused on my deep collar. But he's gonna be one awesome looking uh, mind flayer, I don't know, uh, sea creature in, in my game for sure. So first off on the uh, deep collar, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do some of this patina stuff. Um, it's just like a, a verdigree, you know, like a kind of like a copper um, verdigree um, glaze. And, uh, and then I was like, oh, you know, I like how that looks, but I want to put some like brassy colors on there. So then I decided to go back and do more brassy stuff. And I am speeding all this up because it's just, it's just dumb, like how, how long this took me, how, how many times I went back and forth deciding what to do with this guy. 
but I did go in and um, highlight the uh, one of the Mind Flayer's flesh with uh, with that same uh, verdigris color, and I like it. It looks like sickly green, but also like rusty copper. Um, and uh, I'm also going to use a little bit of it to do some of, some more of the uh, the OSL kind of lighting in um, in the other guy's staff. I was just having fun playing with this palette of colors. So next I decided I wanted to come in and do some brass kind of colors on the, uh, on the staff and the armor. So I went ahead and dry brushed some of that in. But then I changed my mind again. I thought I lost too much of the verdigris. I had to come back in and redo that again. So time to start over with the verdigris. If only all of this layering kind of stuff actually mattered, if it made a difference with the paint job, and it wasn't just me like not being able to make up my mind. But I'm trying to leave the edges of the armor with that kind of brassy look and then letting the uh, the verdigris be on areas where it could collect with the patina where it could actually sort of rust but I do really like the kind of unearthly sort of ethereal green like I think it looks it looks really good on him it looks like a, you know the rusty stuff looks looks cool on him But wait, we're not done yet. It's time to come in with a different color of brass, a, a Vallejo brass instead of the P3 brass, and then see how that looks as a glaze. So yeah, it's just dumb. It's like, what are you doing? Stop, just stop. I was even thinking about coming in back over this with like some gold, especially on his little sigil, on his, um, his little triangles on his shoulder and on his, on his staff too. But yeah, it's just getting done. Like, just stop. But to get the leather, I'm gonna do one more little glaze of uh, game ink. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna use this sepia game ink, which makes an awesome looking leather. It's a, if you're gonna pick up like one color of game ink, grab sepia because it just it makes such good looking leather. But yeah, um, Illithids, Mind Flayers, definitely good enough for Nerd Poker at this point. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna come back to basing them later, but I like their paint job. I think they look cool. But I'm gonna keep going on my deep color, of course. Uh, I'm not quite satisfied with him yet. So I'm gonna mix up a new batch of purple. I'm gonna use um, a little bit of uh, some, some more of this Playo Fantasy Pro flesh tone line, um, and I've got a, like a very light kind of uh, frozen flesh tone uh, skin tone, and then I've got a deep purple, and then I'm going to use just a little bit of that shader and uh, the the purplish kind of shader, and then mix it together to bump down the opacity a little bit, and then I'm going to um, kind of redevelop some of those highlights and uh, get some of my shadows in a few places. But what I really want to do is I want to make, um, like, do extreme highlights, like make um, things pop out. Like, I guess if this guy was a human, it would be his, his face, like his facial features, but I want those tentacles that are up in his face area to kind of pop out, to be like a focal point.
but I'm just gonna go around and do some highlights kind of all over on this guy. Uh, just to kind of his make his extreme highlights pop out, add some contrast, a little bit of interest. So I'm finally done with the mini. Finally made up my mind about how I, how I want him to look, for now at least. Um, so I'm gonna go on to basing and uh, first up I'm gonna do a pass with some of this um, P3 um, Trader Green. And I'm just gonna dry brush that on the base because I want it to kind of have a uh, mossy sort of look to it. And, um, and after that, I'm gonna go in and uh, do some pigments on top of that. But the pigments don't act exactly like a dry brush does. I mean, it's still dry brushing, but the pigments, they kind of like stain more. They don't pick up the highlights as much. They, they actually, want to kind of settle in the recesses a little bit more. So I'm going to go over it with a, a burnt umber pigment and uh, you could use weather pigments with this or just any kind of pigments. Um, but then I'm going to go in with a gray, a lighter gray. So I'm working darkest to lightest. I'm going to go in with a lighter gray next and then I'm going to do one final dry brush and pass with actual paint. So last up, I'm gonna come up, come in with my very lightest uh, highlight on this stuff. And uh, I, I'm using, this is a Citadel Deneb Stone and it's like dried out. Like it's a really old paint. <laughs> so it's good for dry brushing. And, uh, but I'm just gonna pick up those very tippy top highlights just to, um, get the, the very highest highlights of the little rocks and um, but uh, yeah I really like I really like how this looks as like a dry brushing technique I think it makes really good looking rocks and for the last part of basing I'm going to use a little bit of Elmer's clear school glue and uh, this stuff is nice because, like, well, it has a long working time. Um, it will dry completely non-gloss and clear. And uh, also, for what I'm using it for, for, for flocking, um, the super glue and things like that, sometimes they can have a weird reaction with plastics. And uh, it can be like smelly. It can, super glue can even blind you. Uh, I mean, if you if it, if you get it close enough to your eyes, you can even blind yourself with it. But but anyways, yeah. So I'm gonna use a little bit of static grass, and I just had this idea that there was like grass kind of collecting at the very bottom of these rocks, and it was just kind of kind of add some high contrast, uh, some bright colors to this otherwise gray kind of drab base. And uh, last, last, I'm gonna go in with uh, some P3 Thamar Black, and uh, it's just this is just a great black. It's um, it's really dark and opaque, and it has good coverage. And uh, I just want to go around the rims and make the rims black again because I like how black bases look. And that's it. Here's the uh, deep collar with his two Mind Flare buddies, the whole crew, ready to eat some brains. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna come back to the uh, the Mind Flayers later and do basing, but these guys are plenty good enough for my friends to play D&D with. Um, and typically D&D bases, um, they're just black. So and then you know you have terrain like what they're standing on that that you use but uh yeah um 
the uh, the deep collar, you know, like I love him. He's awesome. Probably spend a little bit more time on him than I normally would, but you know, he just like definitely like a centerpiece kind of like leader unit. Looks really cool, and uh, I like him a lot. But uh, I still like I'm seeing some stuff right now where I want to go back on him and do more stuff. But uh, yeah, anyways, um, thanks for watching, you guys, and. Um, Welcome to all my new subscribers. Um, it's been really cool. Like I've, I've seen my channel grow a lot in the last like few months, and um, you know I shoot all my videos with my phone, and then I edit them on my computer with a free editing software. So it's been fun to see all the the likes and stuff that my videos have gotten. So take care of yourselves, you guys, and stay safe.